Welcome to Genderful with Dungeon Master. I'm Dungeon Master, your host, and I use they, them pronouns. And today we have special guest Josen Starr here with us, who is going to talk about gender abolition. Hello, Josen. Hello. I'm glad you're here. In a moment, I'm going to switch to our interview screen where your camera is actually visible. Um, but I just wanted to quickly do my little sort of gender journal for the week, if you will. Um, uh, so just the, the couple things that I've noticed um, that have been interesting or different um, this lately is I'm realizing that my so my testosterone is a gel that I put on my like upper chest and arms and I'm noticing like this this muscle right here is getting bigger but all of these muscles down here are not and it's because the T's is local it's not like an injection or whatever in my body and so it's it's only changing certain parts of my bod <laughs> which is surreal um, anyway, so that's an interesting revelation. I think eventually there will be a more sort of global system testosterone experience, um, but we're just sort of ramping up on the T. And that, that is, yeah, sort of the fascinating thing that I, that I learned um, recently. So what else did I want to share? I would like to share, um, I've been using the, this thing called minoxidil, which is basically Rogaine. It's like Rogaine, but not the brand Rogaine. Um, and I've been putting it here and here and it here. And um, I realized yesterday that on people assigned male at birth who have testosterone in their bodies, the first time they go through puberty, they also tend to grow here, like down here. And I haven't been putting the minoxidil down here. And I'm trying to decide if I'll do that or not. I think for now I'm choosing not, but maybe I'll change my mind later. I mean, the testosterone will cause hair growth in general, probably down there as well. But um, you know, if I'm choosing where the beard is going to grow for now, I'm choosing kind of through here anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say for my chicken. That's, that's all I can think of off the top of my head right now, but that's my, my little trans journey chicken for the week. More rainbow. <laughs> so here we go. Here's our scene. There's our friend Josen. Hello. Hello, hello. Let's see. Let me make sure we can hear you. Maybe I've got something goofy. Would you, would you start with a, like just an intro? Like, who are you? Uh, what's your yeah. What's your deal? What is my deal? That's a good question. That's always a good My deal is constantly changing. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Josen Star. Um, I am a... Uh, recently identified non-binary uh, autistic streamer. Uh, I like to do lots of focus on uh, neurological and like psychological theory um, with lots of smatterings of sociological theory because those things are not really separable. Uh, I like to do art and games. I've been doing a lot of focus on um, animation recently. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, just trying to do s peer support, um, autism awareness, mental health awareness, uh, yeah, trying to build a super great community of people and help other people learn about neat stuff that I have also learned. Yay! I hope that works. I, I uh, introduced. Uh, I am autism. Yeah, I am autism too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also autism awareness slash acceptance, depending on who you ask. Month. It, it is. So I feel like having you as a guest this month is is extra, extra on point. And um. Because I was multitasking, if you shared your pronouns, my brain dropped them right out of my head. Oh, I did not. Uh, well, th thanks for reminding me. My pronouns are he, they. Um, I will very likely get into uh, my personal um, uh, gender identification during this conversation. 
cool. So, yeah. yeah, pronouns are a whole thing that I would love to talk about. Yeah, they're they're on my discussion wish list. I'm also making you a little title card so we can see your name and pronouns on screen the whole time. Cool. Hooray. Uh, okay. Also, if you couldn't tell, I'm a huge fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's awesome. Love that. Yeah, I, uh, I've i gone through some some uh, some revamps here and there, but my my channel aesthetic is is basically like um it it, it at a time it, it was like uh communist jojo final fantasy um and now it's it's pretty much just jojo final fantasy <laughs> i love that well this is so awesome <clears throat> Shall we start with the first question on our list today? Sure. Okay, so the first one I have is what is gender abolition? What is what is that? So uh it's actually a, a more complicated question to answer than I would have guessed. Um I most everything I do is is very um autodidactic, very self-taught. Um, very little of, of what I get comes from any kind of like clinical um, academic perspective, uh, not directly anyway. Um, so when I started to try and find something that could more aptly um, kind of like define the idea of, of uh, gender abolition, it um, was not as easy as I thought it would be. Uh, there doesn't seem to be um, a a concrete definition for what gender abolition is, um, but the the general idea of gender abolition <clears throat> is that um, gender is a um, in, is is a dichotomy that is um, inherently rooted in the oppression um, of women and the dominance of men. Um, and that the only way to eliminate um, the qualifiers of those two categories is to eliminate the categories altogether. It's probably the best definition I could give. I like that. And, um, you know, that that makes me think of times when I've told folks I wish that all bathrooms were just all gender bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think folks who maybe stand to pee and are less mindful about what a mess they're making, if they realize everyone can see it, not just the other stand to peeing folks, they might actually be tidier. <laughs> There's like sort of a boys locker room mentality that I've noticed because, you know, as a trans masculine ish person, one of my greatest anxieties or dislikes is that someday people expect me to use the men's room and I really don't want to. It sounds gross. <laughs> it's a terrible place. It's a I, terrible the, place. The, 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 <laughs> um, the complete like disposition of, of men to treat a bathroom uh, as anything other than a very, very large trash can uh, is just not something I've ever really understood. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's not that hard to aim, guys. Just, mm -hmm. just do it. It's not mm -hmm. that hard. You're not drunk, even. Like you're just an asshole. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, um, pretty much all of the, um, the theories on gender abolition that I could find were were primarily predicated on um, systems of, of of oppression, mm -hmm. which I generally agree with um uh again uh, as i've, I've kind of mentioned to you already that um a lot of my personal view on gender abolition comes from um some uh some theories that a very good friend of mine have has developed um she calls it light switch theory um 
and it's it's very deeply rooted in um like dualistic cosmology um and also like zoroastrianism um mm-hmm. so like in the united states um and in many other western cultures um the the practical example of this is christianity um i mean like the you know the the very first story of of humanity uh involves a woman dooming the entirety of the human race uh to potential damnation um like the the bible sets up um the dichotomy of 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 men and women um to to be uh something uh very rigid that is has like proliferated itself throughout our 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 society pretty much indefinitely Mm -hmm. um and like the light switch theory kind of um uh posits kind of this dualistic cosmology idea that um it it's it's kind of like a trickle down that uh from things like zoroastrianism um we we kind of instill and like it's taught in schools it's it's a big part of our our education system um that that things have opposites mm-hmm. um and um it's it's kind of parallel with this this like good and bad like good versus bad good versus evil um kind of structure so um when you posit that everything has an opposite which is uh nonsense because the opposite of anything is nothing um think like things can't have an opposite um because the opposite of anything is no thing um so uh it, it it's essentially a thinking error um that our society is kind of piggybacked on that um that if you ascribe a equality to something, then there must be an opposite thing that is the 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 like the quality of not that. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, like container theory, if you've ever heard of that, is is very um, like kind of covers this. Um, it's basically that if you if you um, if you have two hats. Um, and you put a, a marble in 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 one hat, um, then that hat must be like a marble hatter, and then the other hat m- must not have a marble because it's a it's it's a, not a marble container. Um, that's kind of like the the thought process that like when when uh, looking at two items. Um, you can you can kind of set them across from each other um and 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 say that that one thing has qualities and that because the other thing does not have those qualities it is its opposite hmm. um so what basically happens when it comes to gender um and these ideas um is that um there are qualities that we ascribe to men and women by inherency um that is kind of complete nonsense um i thought i had this image pulled up but i didn't give me a moment i have it on my phone so um i'll just to to pick out a few because i don't want to go down the whole list um many traits of masculinity that have long time been um ascribed are um logic, focus, integrity, passion, discipline, strength. And uh, using this thinking error, um, which most people do, um, you could not ascribe those traits to the man's opposite, which is a woman, um, under this this thinking error, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So then the the woman um, can't be logical. She has to be empathetic. Um, the woman can't have 
uh, integrity, she must have flow. Um, she she can't have strength, she must have uh, loving kindness. Um, things of, of these kinds of nature. When in reality, like the, the dimorphic structure of, of like human beings is is one of the lowest among all species on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um like we are sexually dimorphic and that's pretty much where the buck stops. Um like there is uh some some marginal um changes in in um in brain function due to hormonal changes. Um but it's it's pretty minuscule in in terms of like overall brain function in terms of capability of of um like pattern recognition, pattern matching, and uh, like emotion concept development, um, and uh, like I, you know, recognizing a, a impermanence and and uh, object permanence, um, things of this nature. Um, like there's there's very very little difference in in actual brain function. Um, so what this entire list is is just a list of, of human traits um and we have decided because we created a, a cult of of gender um that we've deemed to be dichotomous um that each group um must have inherent traits um and because our entire society is predicated on a patriarchal um system of dominance um, all of the traits that would um, provide you with a path to self-actualization and power are attributed to men, and all the traits that would um, provide you with a path to subjugation and subservience to that self-actualization and power are attributed to women. Um, mm -hmm. It is my belief that mm -hmm. it is rooted so deep in our society and the way that we have developed our culture, um, mm -hmm. that you cannot separate the dichotomous nature of this, um, these these um, these boxes, um, without eliminating the this like the structure altogether. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, in my my studies in college and grad school, one of the things that I studied was uh, religion and culture and so sort of looking at what are the the different perspectives of peoples around the world and um, there's this particular um, I don't know if I would call him a theologian I would say he was a scholar um, who studied the the sort of the patterns and the meaning making devices within each religion and compared them and so things like you know all all religions having um a certain symbol or a certain figure some sort of spiritual figure or like an exemplar that's the person for that particular tradition um i just noticed that we did, that, did the stream crash let's see oops says live okay um they're they're because human beings are so meaning making um we uh we look for those dichotomies you know it's mm -hmm. it's part of how our brains are wired and so i i appreciate what you were saying about how you have to remove the dichotomy from existence in order to get rid of the the roles altogether mm -hmm. yeah um yeah so and i mean the the um the insinuation with with the light switch theory um is that that's actually not our natural mode of thinking and it's a thinking error that um was either um consciously or unconsciously um, co-opted by the power structures in our society um, and it's it's pretty much what every single cult like is is predicated on 
um, is that if you position yourself opposite of the evil thing, then you must be good. Um, I mean, uh, it's everywhere. It's in political systems. It's in religious systems. It's, I mean, it's what gender is, um, or it's how gender functions. Mm -hmm. um, um, I mean, there are even entire movements of, of feminism that have um, found themselves kind of predicated in that 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 sense um, that you know be, because they have they have enlightened themselves and like removed themselves um, from like the the heterosexual power dynamic then like they're superior um, and the, the you know that was like early contemporary feminist movement um, yeah 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 um i think i kind of I, I wanted to wrap that back around to something and i, I kind of lost it that's okay yeah um so i'm gonna do a a verbal reminder to the audience thankfully the the mods have been reminding folks but if you have any questions on these topics um you can either post them here in the twitch chat and a mod will plunk them into our ama space in the general chat or you can hop in the discord and submit your questions yourself um, let me see. We did have a question last week. Um, although I guess it is, what is both of your opinions on gender abolitionism? So that's like this whole topic is our opinions on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Um, let's see. So, so I have four questions that are all sort of tangled up. So it's, it's almost like asking the same question, uh, pretty often um, but I think there are maybe maybe in asking them these different ways we'll stumble into something interesting or different um, so one question I have is what does gender abolition look like in public and the other one is what does it look like in private like in the in the public sphere versus the private sphere so like gender abolition in your home gender abolition in public spaces that are being designed, right? Community spaces, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. Um, so I think probably one of the most important aspects to highlight when it comes to gender abolition um, is that it is a restructuring of um, education systems and um, tradition, probably first and foremost. Um, all of us, meaning us adults here, have already been socialized within a gendered structure that we cannot be separated from. Mm -hmm. um, so everything that is important to you, um, that is a part of, of your non-binary identification, <clears throat> is a product of how you were socialized um, within like the gender structure growing up. Um, and how you've chosen to um, kind of rebel against um, that or reclaim whatever aspects of of that um, that gender that you know you you wanted uh, that maybe you were um, not allowed to indulge in at the time. Um, you know, I've uh, just as an example, like my entire life, like I've always found stuff like makeup. Um, and like nice hair um, and tight clothes to have no like feminine implications to them um, but it was heavily frowned upon in my home um, for me to be wearing makeup eyeliner to color my hair um, to have hair that was too long to wear tight jeans any of that kind of stuff um, so like in adulthood I've, I've chosen to reclaim those aspects of of masculinity um but yeah there there are aspects of of um all of us that that we really can't undo um because of how we were socialized um so the one of the i mean probably the most important aspect of it like publicly um is that we would um remove assigning gender at birth that's just not a thing we would do it's just like it like it, you just wouldn't do it um that you wouldn't replace it with anything um you just you would just remove assigning gender at birth um and then 
um, you would no longer um, box children into um, gender. Uh, it is, I mean, it's already weird enough that, that we separate um, like sexually active um, children, like supposedly sexually active children, you know, children in, per in like through pu puberty um, by, by gender and sex. Um, but it's especially strange um, that we would separate children that do not have functioning sex organs um, as though there are any implications that could come of um, like them being together um, in any kind of like um, coexisting space. Um, so that that that's a big part of it. Um, you know, do not segregate boys and girls, boys and girls. Um, like you just don't like you just remove that segregation. Um, and um, and then I mean, you already mentioned it. Uh, just get rid of segregated bathrooms. Um, you just have bathrooms. You just you just have bathrooms that have uh, stand up and stalls. Like if you've ever been in a men's restroom, all restrooms would just look like that. You just have a few urinals and you have a few few stalls. It's it's I mean it's you know it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then um, I think that uh, like uh, I guess a good word to put it would be like federally, um, you would just eliminate the use for the use of pronouns, um, because uh, with gender abolition, uh, the use of neo pronouns could um, get quite explosive. Um, mm -hmm. to the degree that there could be entire social groups that exist um, that use neo-pronouns that are not, like, familiar in other groups. Um, and it, it could lead to, like, you know, government forms that have 75 neo-pronouns on them. Mm -hmm. um, so you would probably just do away with pronouns um, as, as, like, government identifiers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even really see the need for pronouns as government identifiers just use my name um i don't need you to identify my gender to identify me to identify, like you already have my fingerprints and a, like a you know uh algorithmically uh identifiable picture of my face like like what do you need a, a you know yeah what do you what do you need my my pronouns for um Privately, um, I guess this this gen would generally get more into, um, like like family roles, right? Um, so I mean, it would just uh, I think that this is kind of goes more hand in hand with um, what I had said about like we can't really break away from how we've been socialized as adults, um, but it would proliferate into the next few generations. Um, as we eliminate structures of of roles in the home um, to where people could more fluidly um, and comfortably establish um, what they want their roles in the home to be um, mm -hmm. completely regardless of um, of their biological sex um, and it would in my mind um, more effectively um, be based on identifying each individual's strengths um, and and having that individual um, provide in the home based on those strengths um, as opposed to uh, roles that have been ascribed to them because of culture and tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't. We don't have uh, gendered bathrooms in our homes, at least. Certainly. <laughs> um, I mean, I've even like considered the idea of just, just abolishing urinals. Um, like, as far as I can tell, the only reason urinals exists are to save water. Um, I I literally can't imagine any other reason they exist. 
Um, it's not easier for me to use a urinal than it is for me to use a toilet. Mm -hmm. I prefer to use toilets, actually. I hate urinals. Um, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. <clears throat> Oh, lots of lots of juicy things you've said here. I've been taking a couple of notes. Um, you know, there is a there's a like private community that I am in that gathers once a year, and we have all gender neut neutral bathrooms. Like, there's no like women's bathroom and then gender neutral bathroom. It's just all gender neutral bathrooms. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's it's so relieving to just know you can just go in and use the thing and no one's going to give you a hard time and tell you you don't pass to be in that bathroom whoever you are um, um it's really cool yeah go go ahead yeah i didn't mean to cut you off oh no it's okay cool um yeah no well and i i think um gendered bathrooms is probably one of the weirder aspects of the oppressive cult because um, it, it like the existence of gendered bathrooms is entirely predicated on the oppressive system existing. Um, it's almost a, a weird acknowledgement by our society um, that there is an oppressive power dynamic between um, men and women that has to be accounted for because if a man and a woman end up in the same bathroom, then somebody's about to be oppressed like it just doesn't it doesn't track um bathrooms are inherently um like uh like private spaces um like if we turned all bathrooms into the structure of women's bathrooms there would certainly be no issue i am horribly uncomfortable with peeing next to another person at a urinal Ugh. it's just uncomfortable i've never wanted to stand that close to somebody while i peed I don't know why anybody thought that was a good idea. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this idea that, like, uh, it's inherently an invasion of someone's privacy to, like, exist in the same bathroom space just makes very little sense to me. Um, I, 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 I cannot fathom why having um, somebody that identifies differently than you in the stall next to you would have like any inclination on how safe you feel as an individual mm -hmm. yeah yeah hmm. so one of the questions we got in our AMA channel on discord um, is how do we move towards gender abolition like if this was Education. a sales pitch and you've sold us all on it how do we get there from here education first and foremost um so we we would um we would probably uh because more than anywhere else um there there cannot be um any like societal or cultural backlash mm -hmm. um like within the space that it exists um as functionally as it would in elementary schools mm -hmm. um uh just because like um, any of the, the power dynamics that do actually exist um, within our culture um, don't exist in that space, right? Like five, mm -hmm. like five year old, um, like AMAB folks don't actually have that much power over five year old AFAB folks. They just don't. Yeah. Uh, so like functionally, five year olds are five year olds. Um, yeah. um, and so yeah so and and that's uh i mean that kind of comes back to me saying that like it, like we have already been socialized a certain way um so it it has to start with establishing new generations of people um that are not socialized to segregate themselves based on gender because that's really what we're teaching children to do um is to segregate themselves based on gender we do it for them and then they learn to do it themselves um yeah. it's internalized oppression yeah and then and then of course like there's um uh there's like otherization um that occurs because of that um it you know there's this um this kind of i don't want to say mystery because that i don't think that's a really good word to use here but 
um there it does kind of there's this like sense of mystique that happens between um the 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 like two groups of segregation and of course like there's like further ostracization of anybody that doesn't fit into the two categories um uh, and and if we don't segregate them then like they'll understand each other better um like sexual health for teenagers will be a lot better um like the yeah the the weird way that that we um segregate them and and then expect them to play nice when they become adults is very strange mm -hmm. yeah so education first establishing new generations of folks that aren't socialized to self-segregate is mm -hmm. your recommended first step does yeah. that mean all of us yeah, non-binary would... pals should go have babies and raise them right <laughs> If, uh, yeah, if, if if you, I don't want children. I can't even begin to imagine raising a child. I can hardly take care of myself most days. Um, but but yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, interesting. I I feel like yeah. the folks who are on the cutting edge of gender are often not the folks having children one way or another right like adopting yeah what have right you. right and i think part of that is because the self-care of you know someone who is gender non-conforming especially in a world with so many binaries and so many cultural expectations is so like heavy and oppressive it's so much work just to be alive and to take care of ourselves that the thought of taking care of another entity is daunting mm -hmm. um, yeah I have step kids, and I mean, so that's cool. Like, I see them every uh, yeah. weekend, and that's about well, the amount of spoons I have. <laughs> uh, my only sibling is also non-binary and has been very openly um, expressive, even even before they knew that they were non-binary. Uh, that under no circumstances will they be bearing any children. Mm -hmm. um, and we've we've even had like a like a conversation together about how one day at like at a Christmas or something we're just gonna have to sit our mom down and be like, listen, mom, you're not getting any grandbabies. It's just not happening. Sorry. Um, and I mean, I I, it, I don't know. It's it, I think it's probably more in the cards for me than it is for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I just I have so much work on myself that that needs to happen before I could even remotely consider um, taking care of a small human being. Yeah. Well, and the small human beings, they're so deserving of attention and love and support. Certainly. I don't, I don't like hate children or anything. I just don't want one. Yeah. Like I have, I have plenty of friends that have kids and I've seen what it's like. I can't do it. Uh, nope. <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 um, there was one other thing I wanted to touch on about, uh, what gender abolition would look like in public as okay. well. Um, and this could even go as, I, I mean, I feel like this one, uh, would actually be pretty easily implemented across the whole spectrum, um, is, um, eliminating any segregation of um the like the first that comes to mind are like sports teams um and like sports leagues mm -hmm. um but yeah it, any kind of um group activity any kind of competitive activity um any anything that it, it of that type of nature uh any recreational experience that is typically segregated by gender just stop that shit just restructure it to 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 not be that way um so no men's football women's football like just football no don't d yeah don't don't have women's football that doesn't make sense have do it like uh like wrestling and other fighting leagues have uh have um weight categories mm -hmm. you know uh 
and then and then the 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 AMAB folks that aren't six foot five and three hundred pounds can play sports too. Um, you know, if if somebody that 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 was you know assigned male at birth and is five five, one hundred and fifteen pounds, and is obsessed with football, like they can't play football. They would literally die. Yeah. So you know, create a weight category for for people that are between you know five foot four and five foot eight and a hundred and ten to a hundred and sixty pounds or something. I don't know. I don't know what weight categories are typically like in in contact sports, but um, but yeah, just just el- eliminate the segregation of of um of recreational activities. Um, like I think um opening the scouts mm-hmm. was like a really really cool thing that happened like everybody was up in arms and i was like whoa 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 what's wrong with not boys wanting to go rough it out in the woods what why are you so like not okay with that um yeah i i i was probably the only person i knew at the time um like when that happened that wasn't like enraged. Uh, <laughs> I stopped talking to a lot of people around that time because I think that was also around the time that um, the whole transgender people not being in the military thing was happening. And yeah, I had a lot of people in in my my circles that had some some pretty choice words. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, just stop segregating people by gender. Just stop doing it. If we don't need to. It's not an efficient structure of doing things. trying to think about what else would look different in a in a world where gender is abolished. I mean, obviously we wouldn't have gender reveal parties. What a joke that is. Yeah. Uh sexuality. Mhm. Sexuality would change pretty drastically. Um and this would this is actually one that I have not um explored. Like this kind of section of of gender abolition is something I have not explored quite as much. Um but sexuality would change drastically. Mm-hmm. Because how we define sexual attraction would change, right? Um, I mean, how we define sexual attraction is already changing. Um, I think, um, right? Straight wouldn't be a thing. Yeah, it's just yeah, straight, straight wouldn't be a thing. Just all it just flavors wouldn't. of queer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, and like we're already like straight has been like soft redefined already. Um, because I think that it, it at least it seems to me um, that growing up there was a pretty hard al- alignment with um, like heteros or just not even not not just heterosexuality but um any um, like monosexuality being heavily tied to the genitalia of the gender you're attracted to. Um, and we are already seeing a a restructuring and a redefinition of that idea with the trans and non-binary movement, um, where this idea of, of being straight and not caring what genitals your partner has is becoming normalized. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it's very possible that if we eliminated gender altogether, um, the way that we, like, identified our own sexuality would, like, radically change. Mm -hmm. Um, because genitalia would, uh, wouldn't even be a precept. Um... 
and uh, body structure might not even be a precept. It might be entirely predicated on um, how you were socialized just as an individual. Um, you know, like take all the things that you love about your partner that are tied to their like their gender and sexuality and just like remove that from the picture and that's how we would likely view sexuality in the future mm-hmm. you know I'm uh, yeah. I'm wondering if it would if we'd see a shift from the sort of uh, straight versus queer type identities to thinking more about folks who are allosexual versus asexual like people who are less mm-hmm. oriented mm-hmm. towards like sex the activity and more towards other forms of attraction um you know that whole thing yeah i um i mean it's it's certainly possible that the way that we identify sexual attraction or romantic attraction would be entirely predicated on individuality um and there would no longer like it it's possible that gender abolition could lead to sexual orientation abolition Mm -hmm. Um, because you wouldn't have an orientation because it would become so individualized that you wouldn't be able to like categorize it we would all be some sort of pan yeah yeah exactly (laughs) yeah yeah, I mean it, it it could potentially lead to people being maybe a little more selective about the types of people that um that they're involved with romantically or sexually but I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, mm-hmm. um, especially as someone who's autistic. Like, I might be alone forever, because mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, just because I'm highly selective of the type of people that I would be willing to like live in a home with, uh, let alone sleep in the same bed with, and like experience my life with for the rest of eternity. Like, mm-hmm. whew. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I wonder too what what some or any of this would mean um for folks who want to have kids versus folks who are ambivalent or not interested in having kids, like you know, if if gender, if pronouns, if all of all of those pieces fall away in some number of generations, you know, and we're raising children to just be children and not segregating them and teaching them to self-segregate you know I wonder what the evolution of our um, reproductive process would would come to like I wonder if we would choose to externalize it in some sort of sci-fi space way and like you know everyone just donates some genetic material thing I don't know how curious of you to ask (laughs) Um, because that is an entire like part of gender abolition theory um so there is an idea called post-genderism um it's more of uh it's kind of like an offshoot of post-humanism and like um uh like transhumanism um that's eliminating gender uh, and by proxy, uh, uh, eliminating gender roles, um, giving better reproductive rights to um, currently people assigned female at birth, um, doing m- you know more and better research after um, giving that liberation um, to to women and other AFAB folks. Um, that yeah, we would just. Uh, like eliminate the the need for biological reproduction Mm -hmm. um and we could just yeah we would just do like external um incubation um like artificial insemination um because if we could why wouldn't we right um and like there are so there's a lot of like um kind of spooky discussions happening around that um because uh it gets really really like it's like right on the line with some like you um eugenics type stuff Mm -hmm. um because if you're you know it like it it kind of gets in line with like 
what a lot of people were hoping CRISPR was going to be able to do. And like, if we have the ability to alter the genome, um, you know, should we, or would we, um, you know, if we can identify, um, like developmental disorders and, and like, you know, health defects that are prevalent in the birth process, you know, would we want to fix them? And, um, it, it gets into like a lot of erasure stuff, which is not cool. Um, but Especially yeah, that, that is an entire people. That's a whole other conversation, isn't it? it? Yeah, exactly. Especially as somebody that is autistic and like, I can have that retroactive thought of like, oh, well, if like that was available to my, my mother, uh, and like, then I wouldn't have been born. <laughs> like that's, that's not cool. Um, which is, I mean, you know, uh, just as a complete and total aside, uh, like, kind of funny counter to um, the, the like, realization that I've had that, like, hey, it probably would have been better for most parties involved. Like, literally all parties involved except for me if I wasn't born. <laughs> I've had that conversation quite a few times. Um, just because, like, uh, just, like, the fact, like, the, 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 objective factors involved with my existence leading into uh, what my mother had to deal with and the struggles that followed like whew. definitely one of those situations that's like mm, maybe you should have made a different choice but uh, that's neither here nor there because <laughs> things happened the way they did and they couldn't have happened any other way because that's how reality is um, so trying to think of anything else I wanted to cover. Are there any other theories? Could you could you share the names of the theories you've like the thinking and error? What was that theory called? So that that is an autodidactic theory um, developed by my friend Jane the Message. Um, she she calls it light switch theory. Um, it it's very heavily influenced and informed on uh, from like dualistic cosmology and container theory or containment theory. I think it's containment theory. Mm -hmm. um, and Jane the Message is a streamer. People could actually go follow Jane also. Yes, Jane the Message out, is check out the stuff. Uh, super dope. She's an autistic streamer, rapper, dancer, clown. Yep, she's all those things. Uh, yeah, she does really, really awesome um, like autism, peer support, awareness type stuff. Um, she streams her special interests. Um, nice. She's cool. She, I, she's the one that helped me realize, or like, discover that I'm autistic. Um, yeah, so there is, um, gender abolitionism, um, which is the one that I typically am more, um, ascribed to, which is, um, mostly uh, pretty much entirely informed by feminism um and that to um to like obviously you can you can kind of extrapolate it and clearly i have um but it's it's primarily that women are oppressed um to uh like remove them from the uh, the oppressed class uh, you must remove the classification of woman um and if there is no uh oppressed class for the oppressor to oppress, um, then by proxy, that classification will also disappear. Um, there is gender nihilism, which I'm less familiar with. Um, but it has less of a view of like gender being like an oppressive hierarchy. Um, and, and, uh, involves non-binary genders um, and gender as a as a structure being linked by like differing power relations and um, but still fundamentally um, like insists that that gender causes harm um, and that gender the, and like that harm is conceptually linked to gender categories and then um, I think the the third one would be posthumanism. 
or po post genderism. Um, and then there are like, uh, there's like some links to like gender abolitionism and, and like colonialism, which is something to consider. Um, I think, I mean, really anytime that we invent an, uh, like a theory in the West, we have to consider colonialism. Um, because anytime we're trying to spread ideas from the West, it's it's always going to come from a colonialist perspective. So we mm -hmm. have to consider colonialism and, and be aware of that whenever we're trying to disseminate theories and ideas. Yeah. Um, I love it. And then My goodness. I, this there is does like a seem to be lecture. I'm learning so much. <laughs> There, there was definitely the thought of uh, that I had that I'm like, ah, oh, this is just a TED talk. Um, there, there seems to be, I um, mean, this is just an observation that I've made. Um, it, it might not even be as prevalent as as it appears to be just based on my searches, um, just like my scavenger hunting for information. <laughs> um, uh, that there, the, the largest group of people that are gender aware and are typically opposed to gender abolition um, seem to be groups of transgender folks. Um, binary trans and, folks. Uh, yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, binary trans folks. Um, and there's likely some some um, For lack of a better way to put it, some like gender euphoria um, type um, implications involved there. Um, the the liberation that that comes with with um, discovering, identifying, and then actualizing um, your your um, binary transgender. Um, I could see how how the the euphoria and the liberation that comes with that that dis that self discovery um, might cause some some um, some clashing with the idea of then eliminating this thing that that kind of um, gave you a sense of of self worth and, and liberation and freedom. Yeah, you know, I feel like there's still even if gender as a construct was abolished in the ways that we've been discussing, um, there's still, like, people still want to look certain ways, right? And imagine if mm -hmm. gender presentation became a grab bag and you saw yeah. more people doing the the gender fluid or the gender fuck, the yes and, the, the person with a beard and a skirt and makeup and muscles and painted toenails and whatever like yeah yes and um and there would still be room for people to you know dress according to whatever they felt comfortable presenting and i wonder if it would go from you know like the gender euphoria of passing to the like self-actualized euphoria of being oneself fully mm -hmm. yeah yeah i vibe yeah definitely vibe with that um and yeah, I mean that would be the general idea is is that um, anything that we currently uh, classify or identify as um, as like a, a a gender expression would just become uh, it would just become rolled into your individualized self expression. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you would just remove um, like gender and biological sex from the equation entirely, um, and now you are completely free to express yourself. Um, as you see fit, just period, so like yeah. how however you want to do it, go for it. Um, and yeah, I would love to see a world uh, where we provide people with that much expressive freedom. Um, I mean, like I like only coming just started out would stop being a thing. Coming out would stop being a thing. What yeah, a you would just be, would be like, yeah, in that in this like utopian vision, like you would just always be the thing that you are um and you're constantly going to be affirmed in however you want to express that um you know i only just started like
painting my nails uh, a couple of months ago, and it was like the most surprisingly like freeing thing that I've ever done to express myself. Um, like I I don't know if you can really see it, but like th this 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 specific color. You probably really can't see the sparkles specifically. Um, yeah. Makes me feel like an ice princess. That's probably the best way. Like just like that. Yeah, no, that's the best way. Is an ice princess. Like I'm like I I don't want to say Elsa because that sounds weirdly cliche. But like it it's just got this. I don't know. And and that's like something I'm I'm very comfortable in and like it makes me feel cute and expressive and like that's awesome um and you know like i started with black that's it like i i started with with the color black and then immediately was like well i need to go get another color cuz i need some variety yeah and i i walked out with four other colors and two of them were were sparkly um, and yeah like it's just it's if I could have sparkle rainbow nails and not get misgendered I would be so thrilled mm. like there's another example of the oppression of a binary gender system right it's just like you know and even like medically like trying to like being trans and taking HRT and doing those pieces like you know, one of my one of my doctors used a form letter to advocate for me for my HRT and tell the insurance company like, hey, this person is trans for real, and it all had it had he him pronouns all over it, and my pronouns are they and them. So I was getting misgendered, but it was, you know, the opposite wrong gender. But still, it's just like, oh goodness, like even the trans oh, healthcare goodness. providers are just yeah. There's not there's like non-binary is so far down the path of non-cisgender options that you know people struggle to catch up and so then gender abolition feels like it's even further down the path like yeah like, like yeah, a two no, or three I... lifetime can kick down the path of like we're yeah not ready i'd be for this pretty... until maybe even people our age are all died off yeah, no, I'd be pretty hard pressed <laughs> to 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 see um any real movement in in the direction of of gender abolition before I'm dead. Um, it'd be nice, but uh, culturally, I just don't think we're that far. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that there's potentially a notion that culture is moving faster, um, than it ever has. Mm -hmm. Um, I but think the internet has played a huge role in that. I agree. Um, I think that that the the free exchange of information is is allowing us to learn things about one another faster than we ever could, mm -hmm. and it's giving a voice to minorities in a way that they never had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like uh, like a really common like transphobic kind of position is is this idea that like. Um, the, the trans agenda only just popped up, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And mm -hmm. it's just like, we have documentation of, of trans people thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. just for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, like, the, like we, we have like clear indication that there were, there were transgender people in, in ancient Egypt. Um, you know, it, it's the, it, it's been around for a long time. Trans people have been around for a very long time. Um, and and it's only with the the age of information that, that they're able to really have a voice, uh, which is rad. Um, That's very cool. Just need to get the neoliberal fucks and the conservative pieces of shit to get with the program or leave the planet. Preferably the second one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Could you imagine like planets for people with different perspectives? Like we have countries now. Oh that... no. Oh, that'll be a thing one day probably. Oh no. I like I was just like we'll I just literally had the have the blue planet of, like... and the red planet. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what 
what strange dystopian sci-fi have we imagined um a planet that? where all the like a, a, a planet where all of the the like conservatives <laughs> and oh no like i just because i just had the the like imaginary thought in my head that like y'all want to like go with with elon musk to mars so bad fucking do it and then <laughs> i started thinking about how like oh they would just conquer us because we we would spend our entire like like we would spend generations upon generations like building uh like the the most um, like amazing so, uh, like society of of like accepting learning uh like growing individuals and they would just be manufacturing nukes the whole time mm-hmm. wow. okay well i just depressed myself with uh, <laughs> a highly unlikely dystopian future um, that's enough future that's, for today. <laughs> I think that's enough future for today, definitely. I resonate with that. Well, um, is there anything else you want to discuss today before we kind of wrap up and start working on a raid? Um... I guess not particularly. I said that I was gonna um, talk about my own gender expression, and then I didn't. Um, so I guess I could like put some clarity on that. Sure. Um, so I. So, I mean, specifically, like, as an autistic person, like, gender has just kind of always been a fuck. Like, it's just... Uh, I just never really felt the need to, like, heavily identify with, like, what it means to be a man. Like, mm -hmm. manhood was never really something I felt like I needed to to identify with. I mean, like... Um... Yeah, I like I don't know. I, th there's definitely things I was socialized to identify with, but most of them are sexual in nature and there's like other complications involved there. Mm -hmm. Um but uh especially within the last 6 months or so, I'd say closer to the last 12 months or so, but especially within the last um 6 months, I didn't change my title. <laughs> I'm silly. Um I just started to, to like really realize that like I have no interest in being identified as a man but yeah. also I've never dis experienced gender dysphoria in my life I'm very comfortable in my male body I'm relatively comfortable with um, like masculine expression mm -hmm. um, I think probably the only thing that I've really come to like have a distaste for is blue jeans hmm. I can't believe I've worn blue jeans like my whole life they're gross um but I I had a a really interesting conversation with my friend Jane at the park a couple of weeks ago about the idea because I'd been I'd been tossing it around a little bit and like I've, I've even like fantasized about uh having like a like an alienization as I, I as I might call it uh operation where like my sex organs are just removed hmm. and whatever part of my brain is is connected to that can just also be removed and I can just not have uh, like just remove sex and gender and romance and intimacy from my existence because I don't need it mm -hmm. um which is like I mean it's completely a fan that's not a thing like I, that's not how that works um but yeah it's just like tossing around a, like a lot of different ideas about um what it means to have a gender and to identify with one in today's world and just not wanting to to be like never kind of in that that position of like I never asked to be a man 
Um, being a man sounds like it sucks. Um, and she was just kind of like, you know, if I was in your position, I would probably also identify as non-binary because she's she identifies as a cis woman and is also a gender abolitionist, which mm-hmm. is like not common. Um, and yeah, she was just kind of like, I would just like if for no other reason than to distance myself from the oppressor class that is men, yeah. I would I would identify as non-binary. And I was like, yeah, that's I vibe with that. I vibe with that really hard. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Also, given the the ties between gender abolition and the feminist theories and movement, it would make sense that a cis woman would agree with gender abolition. What I would find particularly notable is if a cis man identified with gender abolition. (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i agree yeah i uh because i yeah I, ca- I i cannot imagine um like identifying with the power structure that is being a man yeah. and wanting to also abolish that power structure mm-hmm Well, thank you so much, Josen, for for being on stream with us today and talking about things. And um, I, yeah, I hope this was informative. I loved our I loved our chat, um, y'all. In lieu of trying our shout out commands that aren't working once more, we're actually just going to go raid Josen. So if you hang out for the raid, you can go follow Josen over on his channel. And Josen, what what do you have lined up for stream today? You'd mentioned maybe some party games or something kind of fun and lighthearted, perhaps. Uh, maybe. we'll probably just do some just chatting, um, cool. to start with because that's so a lot of my streams just turn into that. Uh, I I don't usually stream on Mondays, mm-hmm. so we are off schedule. Um but we might do a little bit of reading nice. possibly okay cuz i my schedule might be changing because i have a thing i usually do on monday nights that i might not be doing on monday nights anymore um but yeah i mean we'll we'll probably just hang out for a bit we uh might do some some special interest games um nice. i would be super happy to do any kind of like ama type thing um if you all want to come in and just pick my brain about stuff i love to do that it's the thing i really enjoy doing so um, yeah i really appreciate you doing this with me this was really exciting um yeah i hope it was informative totally informative i have so many notes my brain feels expanded yay (laughs) it's awesome i did a good you did a good you did such a good (laughs) So, dear friends, we're gonna go. We're gonna go raid Josen. Here's our raid messages because it's fun to do. And then any of Josen's viewers who have no idea this is happening will be all two of them. Oh, will I be just, surprised all, by our all two fancy, of them fancy yes. buttons. <laughs> yes, thank you everyone for um, attending. We have our gender stream every Monday, um, and next week's guest. Let me double check is uh brooklyn underscore michelle brooklyn is a I believe brooklyn is a trans woman and we were having a lovely chat in someone else's stream and i was like hey do you want to come be on my show and i forget if we have figured out what exactly we're talking about next week so i need to get the topic figured out but we do have a guest scheduled for next week um and reminders that it there is a slight chance that i may cancel one of our interview streams because of family family people passing away thing that's happening um so if that happens that is why and i will reschedule with our guests if they're into it yeah brooklyn's brooklyn's coming on yeah it's going to be so awesome we've been having little chats in discord and it's been really lovely i've had such a fun time getting to know people it's so good but for now let's go say hey to Josen's community let's go drop some follows and stuff yay thanks everybody 
see over there.